Hi guys, thank you for joining me. Today I am back out again, which I'm super excited about, and I'm going to be doing an overnighter. So I've got my scent, my my scent, my tent set up behind you there, and um, so I got here about half an hour ago and just been setting up my gear and starting to dig a fire pit down here. So uh, stay tuned. So with me today I've got my DD temp, it's nice and lightweight and uh, it's raining later, I need a nice waterproof tent. So I've set up in this really nice woodland here and it's got bluebells growing, starting to bud. Yeah so it's really nice and uh, I'm looking forward to tonight, hopefully the rain does it last too long? I've stripped all of the bark off of my off of this stick so it doesn't contaminate the meat that I'm going to cook. I'm gonna think about getting my fire started soon. I've got quite a bit of firewood, so... So it's actually not long until the bushcraft show, um, which is based in the UK, and I literally can't wait for that, it's going to be really good. I really enjoyed last year, there's so many knowledgeable, knowledge, knowledgeable people, and yeah, there's so many skills going on, it's just, it's really nice atmosphere, you can learn things from all the different people that have their individual skills so yeah it's really inspiring hearing all the chats and really it's just really nice because everyone's enjoying the same thing and like-minded so that is in like a month's time now so not long at all so I can't wait for that if you are going to the bushcraft show 
uh, leave it in the comments and um, please do come say hello if you see me there um, and have a little chat it's always nice to to get to meet subscribers or fellow bushcrafters so yeah so I've just put the stick that my chicken's going to go on over the top of my fire just to give it a little bit of a sterilise So at the moment I'm just making some skewers to go in the chicken just so when I turn it round it doesn't slip and spin. So I've just got a wad of sticks for tomorrow morning for lighting my fire, so I'll keep that in my tent. So she's cooking nicely. Looking great. Still quite a while though. So, chicken update. Um, it's been on for like two hours. Or, yeah, two hours. And um, I think there's probably another hour to go at this rate. I've been keeping the fire going. I made myself coffee. I got a bit more wood. And um, taking some photos. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing in the last two hours. Just chilling out really. Um, but yeah, I'm really hungry.
I'm going to tuck him, eat as much as the, of the chicken as I can that's done. Um, and then with the rest of it I'm just going to throw it into the pot and have that for tomorrow. But yeah, it's really good, really good. Morning guys, it's day two today. Um, I woke up about five minutes ago and it's uh, it was raining a little bit, you can see where it's been raining on my tent, but I slept I slept well last night. Um, yeah, I was surprised how like dark how late it gets dark. Um, so it got dark at about half eight so it's crazy um, so that was nice getting to your tent later on how you can still do things outside without having to use a head torch um, but yeah I'm gonna get the fire going in a minute so I'm just gonna get my fire going with a bit of birch bark and a ferro rod. I've been using this striker more than the back of my knife as I don't really want to uh, wear my 90 degree bleh, wear away my 90 degree spine too much so I use this instead plus it's good to practice with different things as Say you did lose your knife and this is your backup, at least your, you can still use your backup well. So everything is a little bit damp this morning so it might take a little bit longer. But it doesn't matter, I've got my bundle of twigs here that I collected last night. So that will help a bit.
so it's raining again outside. I decided to come sit in my tent to not get too wet and uh, have my coffee. And then I'll probably prepare the broth in here and cook it over the fire. So it's quite dark but I can kind of make it out that I am cutting my carrots. I've got carrots, onions, potatoes and then I kind of chopped up the chicken a bit more and that's in there and then I added some water afterwards. So that's on the fire now. I'm just going to leave it there to simmer and so everything kind of breaks down and flavours the water that's in there. But this is the same process that our ancestors would have used, that um, we would have to use in a survival situation, and people who have to kind of preserve and ration their food. So you'd have to hunt for an animal and then use the meat for like steaks and joints um, and then with the leftover bones and eyes and leftover bits of meat you'd have to boil them up and make stews and broths to get the most out of the animal plus the broth does contain a lot of nutrients so yeah this is a process you'd have to use and if you didn't boil the bones and you'd use them for tools what he wanted to do is produce a fully nutritious stock of bones. So, yeah, and then with the fur, you would have to make like skins, maybe a hat or gloves, or if it's a larger game, then you'd make a coat. So yeah, it's making the most of the animal. You probably wouldn't have had the vegetables that I've got unless they were growing them um, if you were somewhere long term you'd have to think about growing your own crops and vegetables spring's a really good time as you've got a lot of wild edibles like wild garlic so I've just got my first serving of broth so I'm going to try it now see what it's like so it's raining again um, and I'm sitting in my tent it's actually quite grim out now I think I'm going to go home at about one-ish so I'm going to pack up the t my tent and all my bits and head off home so I hope you enjoyed this video thanks for watching